In this video, I'm going to show you how to clean your data and get it ready for doing the statistics for this class. So here I have my survey opened, and you can see I have two responses here. Before I look at the responses, I just want to show you that I made one more question. Um, so this question, I made it a Likert-type scale, but I didn't put the numbers. Instead, I put the kind of the... Um, the responses that go with the numbers, so like one strongly agree, but instead of putting the one through five like I did here, or I just put the actual categories. But when you have a Likert type scale, you really need it to be numbers to do the statistics on it that we want to do. So I don't recommend doing it like this, but if you do do it like this, I'll show you how to fix it. Um, it's okay. It's just you're going to have to do a little bit more work. Um, but I recommend doing it like this if you have a Likert type scale or like this. So then your answers would just automatically be numbers for you and you won't have to fix it. Okay, but we can fix it if you don't do it that way. So we're going to go to the responses here. And you can see that there's some charts for you already. If you want to take a look at that, just kind of see your data a little bit and then I'm going to click here to create a spreadsheet and I'm going to create a new one this probably won't pop up unless you have already created one before I actually had to go ahead and copy my uh, survey and take it again um, so I guess this is why it's popping up but this shouldn't pop up for you All right, so now we have a Google Sheet. Um, this is just like Excel, but it's on the internet and it's free. So you can use this for the whole class if you like. But you can see it'll give you the question here. And so the variables go by column, has all your questions and then their answers. And then the rows are people. So I just took this really quickly, but um, this would be the person one and for this whole row, and then person two would be this whole row. Okay, so the first thing you want to do is probably change your uh, variable names because they're kind of long and you can't really see them all. So this is kind of hard to see what it is. So what I would do would be to change it. But you might want to have a key, you don't have to, but I would add a sheet here, the bottom here, and say we're going to call the first one gender. So you can go ahead and just copy what the whole question is and put it here. So you can just remember, but if you don't want to do this, you can just always go back to your you know, original survey and look at the questions. And you can do that for the rest of your variables if you want. But anyways, you want to, you know, just kind of give these other names that are smaller than what's here. Oops. All right. Then after you do that for all your variables, I'm not going to do it all right now, just for time. Then you kind of want to look at your um, data. In particular, you want to look at the data that allows people just to type in any number or anything that they want, so the short answer questions, because they might not follow your direction. So if you, for example, here I asked um, people to enter numeric numbers, but this one person did not, you're going to have to go in and fix that yourself. So if it says two, you're going to have to put two. So if you have any characters, any words in this column, when you try to take the average or do other statistics on a scale variable, it won't work. So that's the f um, next thing you want to do. Then if you have a um, scale like this where the questions all go together, and you want to take an average of the items so you have one composite score for the whole psychological concept instead of just taking an item at a time 
Then you need to make an average of all these items. And we're going to make a um, column for that. So a psychological construct um, or a concept is usually measured by multiple items and then the average is taken. But all these items need to go together. Like I enjoy learning new things. I'm one of my classes I feel interested. I feel curious. Stuff like that. Class is fun. I hate class. That's kind of the opposite way of saying it. So this is a reverse coded item. But anyway, these all these items kind of go together. They're about the same thing. So only average them together if they're about the same. Concept. But, but before you do that, you probably want to change the uh, names here. And this scale is called student engagement. So I'm going to call it SE1. And then this one we SE2. SE3. This kind of lets you know that they all are on the same scale. They're about the same concept. sorry five all right also this question used to say I hate class so that's a reverse coded item the other ones are about I like going to class class is interesting so this one is in the opposite direction but it's still kind of the same concept right it's just in reverse so you kind of notice that um, if people say high numbers on these, they tend to say low numbers on number five. And if they say low numbers on these four, then they typically will going to say high numbers on this last one. So you need to switch the numbers and have them in reverse. So this two needs to be a four and this four needs to be a two. So if you had a one, it would be a five. If you had a two, it would be a four. If you had a three, it would stay a three because it's in the middle. If you had a 4, then it would be a 2. If you had a 5, then it would be a 1. We're just switching the numbers. Okay, and an easy way to do that will be this way. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to insert a column. So I want to insert it to the left here. Um, and we're going to call it SE5. R and wherever you put it is I want all these to be together because in a minute I'm gonna average them out. So it's easier if they're all together, but they don't have to be, I guess. Um so then here I'm gonna say equals and then I'm gonna take the number of response options, which I had five, and then I'm gonna add one so that's gonna be six and then I'm gonna subtract off the original response and voila it gives me four what it what it should be then after you do it for the first row here that you have you want to go here the bottom right of this where this little uh, square is and cover over it and then double click there and now we have it for all the responses. If there's more, they would continue to do this, but there's only two. All right, so now we have that. So now we reverse coded the number five. And now I wanna make a composite score. So I'm gonna insert another column. Let's see if you highlight it, then I think it gives you, there you go insert to the right so I'm gonna call this student engagement composite or something like that so we're gonna average these five items by person and the row is the person so we're gonna put equals and then average is what the function is in Excel or Google Sheets so you're gonna say average and then you're gonna highlight all the ones that you want to take an average of. So this is how you would do it. And then close the parentheses and press enter. Now, what if they're not all together like that? Say one of them is way 
I don't know, this one, the original one, then you could put a comma and then click this one as well. Make sure you stay in the same row. Well, you could also do that if they're not all perfectly together, but we don't really want that one, so I'm going to go and delete it, but just in case they're not all together so nicely. And press enter, and then again, you can click on it and go to the bottom right here and double click, and it'll do it for all your rows, all your people. So now I have one score for the student engagement scale. Instead of working with all these different items, now I just have one score for this concept. So the idea is that if we have multiple items, that is a better indication than just any one item alone. And if you have a shit out, it kind of um, takes care of any unreliability that you might have in the items. Or hopefully it takes care of some of the unreliability. Okay, so if... You've done all that, that's good. Um, the only other thing that you might have to do is if you had a question that was supposed to be a Likert type scale and instead of putting the numbers, you accidentally just have the categories in your Excel sheet here. So over here, when I did these student engagement items, I indicated that one was strongly disagree and five was strongly agree, but I actually had the responses just be numbers. So when I downloaded the responses, it gave me numbers automatically. But that might um, not happen. So if you accidentally didn't do that, it's okay. We can fix it. And I'll show you how to fix it. This part is a little bit more complicated. And so if you're really having trouble with it, you can contact me and I'll help you do it or do it for you if you're really having trouble. It's not too, too complicated, but it's a little bit. So what I wanted is to have one be not likely at all, somewhat likely be two, and highly likely be three. So I had three uh, categories here and I I actually wanted it to be a Likert type scale, and so number one, not likely to, at all, number two, somewhat likely, and three, highly likely. So it is like a Likert type scale, I just didn't put the numbers. So that's okay, so I'm going to put equals here, and then an if. Then you want to open a parentheses, and then just start with the first one. So if this, so you want to click on the same row the variable that you want to recode. This is called recoding. And you want to say if that equals and then you're going to have quotes because we're typing out words instead of just having numbers. If it was just numbers you wouldn't need the quotes. But if it's highly like or not likely at all. I'm going to start with that one. Not likely I think it was at all. You make sure, yeah, not likely at all. If it's not likely at all, then I want to put a one. So I'm going to put it equals if, open the parentheses, then click on the cell of the variable that you want to recode. So the first one, make sure you stay in the same row. Equals, and then in parentheses, not likely at all. So that's in my first category comma and then put what number you want it to be okay that's the first step then you're going to put another comma and put another if and open up another parentheses and then you're going to type in your well first you're going to put that same cell and then put equal and then type in your second category so mine was somewhat likely And then close your quotes and then put comma and then put what you want that category to be. And then now I need to do it one more time because I had three. Now if you had five, you're going to have to do this five times. It's a little annoying, but you should have to do it for every single person manually. It'll do it automatically for you. 
So then do this again. So if is, oops, I did the wrong one. Make sure it's the same one. So that equals highly likely, that's my last category. Oops, highly likely in the quotations, then I want to put a three. Now, what you're supposed to end it with is, so now I'm done. I did all my different categories. I need to finish it up though. So I'm going to put another comma. And then if you had some number that you wanted to be, if it's not any of these categories, you could put that here. But I just want it to be blank if it's missing because I have all the categories that it could be. So if it's not there, I still want it to be blank. So I'm not going to put anything right here, but you could. So this part is, if it's not any of these other ones, what do you want it to be? I want it to be blank because if it was already blank, I want it to be blank again. So I'm not going to put anything there, but you do need the comma there. And then you need to make sure you close all your parentheses. So I had three categories. So at the end, I need three parentheses. All right. And then when you get that there, then you press enter. Voila, it is a three. That's what I wanted it to be. Highly likely I wanted it to be three. Now you need it to ha do it for the rest of them. And the easy way to do that is to click on that cell and then double click on the bottom right here. So that'll do it for all of them. And I only had two, so it does it for the two. But if you had more, I would do it for all of them. So that's the way you can recode things. And the if statement's um, actually pretty useful when you're doing um, surveys. And you can do it for other things too. Like if you really don't like how you have your numbers, you can change your numbers if you want. There's a lot of different times that I do use an if statement, either in Excel or a different statistical program.